South African sailor Kirsten Neuschaffer is making history in the Golden Globe race that got underway on the 4th of September last year. The race, in a boat designed prior to 1988, is a solo sail around the world via the five Great Capes. Neuschaffer was the first past Cape Horn and she's in pole position to reach the finish at Les Sables de Long first. I spoke to founder of the race, Don McIntyre. I mean, she's a great sailor in her own right, but she's also the first woman to actually get around and lead a solo around the world yacht race ever. And so there's a lot of excitement and buzz about that. And she's having a great time. I mean, she really enjoys the fact that she's doing it with a sextant. She's listening to cassette tape players for music. You know, she's at one with the ocean. So there's a, there's a certain serenity and simplicity to it that she really enjoys. And uh, it's a serious challenge. That's the incredible part. I mean, uh, you don't have the benefit of satellites, you can't call family, things like that. It's something very special. Just the physical challenge of being out there completely on your own, what is that like? Well, for her, I mean, she's chosen a boat, which is one of the biggest boats in the fleet, um, and it's quite demanding. But uh, I can only describe Kirsten as being unique at every level. Uh, she sailed about a quarter of a million miles in the ocean. You know, she's uh, really a, a superb sailor. She's mentally and physically strong, but she's not a huge person. Like, she's not a, a big, tall giant. She's really uh, a very smart thinker and a and very unique individual, uh, quite intelligent. You know, she speaks lots of languages and uh, a superb sailor. So she's driving the boat really well, and it's an incredibly demanding you know, isolated challenge where you face everything. You know, it's life in the extreme. Too soon to say that she could actually win this year's Golden Globe? Yeah, there's a, there's a strong possibility. I mean, she's, um, she's in the lead right now, only by about three or 400 miles, but um, she has every opportunity to try and pull this off. There's a bit of luck involved, but you also make your own luck through the preparation that, that's involved with getting yourself and the boat right. She's over two-thirds the way around the course. In fact, she's now about three-quarters of the way. So sometime in the next six weeks, uh, she'll be right there. And the, there's only one other boat threatening her at the moment, an Indian guy by the name of Avalish Tommy. And so there's a lot of uh, interest in the GGR right now, thanks to Kirsten. Does it mean for that person's career and for their CV to have, you know, a Golden Globe win on it? Well, to put it in perspective, the first edition was in 1968 and there were uh, nine men started and only one finished and that was a sailor by the name of Robin Knox Johnson who's, who's an icon in the sport even today. In uh, 2018, on the 50th anniversary, there were 18 starters and only five finishers. Okay, right now we set off with 16 starters, 15 men and one woman. Okay, we're down to four left at racing in the GGR and Kirsten's leading the fleet. It is no mean feat to finish the race. It, it, it is an incredible challenge. It's, it's one of the toughest you could possibly imagine for any individual in any sport. She had a little bit of a difficult night last night. What happened? Well, yeah, you, she had some quite strong headwinds, up to 50 knots, blowing from exactly where she wanted to go. Now, normally in heavy weather, you actually turn around and run with it. But she can't do that because if she goes the opposite direction, uh, the, the Avalish who's chasing her... Uh, he's, he's in different weather and he's still sailing north. So she decided to do what's called hove to and that stopped the boat in the middle of the heavy weather, which has its risks, but she decided that was the best thing to do. So she had to stop the boat, just more or less hove to and take it as it comes and that lasted maybe about eight or ten hours. But fortunately now she's back on track and she's underway. But uh, uh, the second boat is about 400 miles behind and that's close. <laughs> So how, when are you guys expecting them to actually reach the finish line, to reach the conclusion of the race? Well, we think it, there's a, still a lot to go, but we think it'll be somewhere maybe the middle of April or the third week in April. And that would mean it's about an eight-month journey. So she will have been at sea alone, completely alone, for about eight months by the time she gets back and uh, had no resupply, still eating the same food she packed when she left and... Uh, uh, you know, drinking water, a lot of it she's catching by rain and, and so on. So that's her world at the moment, and she'll be happy to get there as well. But she's fiercely competitive. She really wants to win this race. You know, it's not just a, a journey for her. I mean, it is, but it isn't. You know, it's one of those things. It's funny how one just craves things from home from time to time. Good thing I took a bit of a supply of Millie Pup with from South Africa when I left.